Hi everyone, welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from Newfoundland and Labrador. And today I have the privilege to interview Gregory Ofner from Philadelphia. Hi, Gregory, how are you doing? Hi, Meher. I'm, I'm well, I'm a little chilly, a little cold, but uh, I'm doing well otherwise. Thank you for being here. So Gregory was a world-renowned dual piano performer who just happened to also have a 15-year career leading sales and marketing efforts for some of the world's large, largest companies. And he also worked in Ontario in Canada, but now he is in Philadelphia. As an award-winning keynote performer, Gregory helped organizations and the people within them shape cultures of highly fulfilled and high-performance people. And the music he performs, kind of a metaphor for engagement and resilience, and he has good ones on LinkedIn, so I recommend everyone to check him out. Uh, it's a deep and un unforgettable performance that leaves them refreshed and equipped with skills to reframe obstacles as opportunity. So before starting the first question, so why music? I know that music has a lot of benefits, so why do you use music in your uh, as a keynote in your speaking? So for the audience, mm -hmm. it acts as a pattern interrupt. So a little psychological device that makes them stop their current train of thinking and get them to actually pay attention to what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, there are other reasons in terms of the stickiness of the content. So when we associate multiple senses with a learning experience, yeah. we internalize it, we remember it better. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'd be lying if I didn't also say that it's because it's fun. I, it's it's something I really enjoy yeah. too. So it brings more of me and who I am mm. into the experience. As your full authentic self, which is at least our first question. So why it's important for job seekers, in your in your opinion, to know who you who, to know who they are, what their values, why it's important? Yeah, it's very easy for others to impose their wants on you if you're not clear about your wants. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's talk today about boundaries and setting boundaries and that no one will respect your boundaries if you don't respect and set your boundaries. And that goes for your aspirations and your goals and your desires that if you're wavering or unsure of what you want, there are tons of unscrupulous people and even well-meaning people yeah. who will suck you into the vortex of their, their energy or their charisma, yeah. and they will get you to spend years of your life mm -hmm. working towards something that you may discover you don't actually care about. And so taking the time while it feels like uh, an annoyance and a frustration because we have to slow down the world around us and slow yeah. down our thinking and be very deliberate mm -hmm. about getting clear on what we want. If we don't do that, mm -hmm. my, my experience, so don't let me push onto other people. My experience is that I didn't do that. And I spent 15 years of my life working a corporate day job that was fine. I, I, I A lot of what I have today is because of that hard work, yeah. but I didn't achieve as much as I would have liked to mm -hmm. with those 15 years because I wasn't pursuing what I was truly passionate about. But do you think that when people know their values and they're applying for a job, there should be alignment between themselves and the employer? Should be 100% alignment or it all depends on the job and the person? It all depends on the job and the person. Ideal would be 100%, of course. I mean, who wouldn't love that? That's, I think, what we might call our dream job. But yeah. you, keeping what I just said in mind, you also have to start somewhere. I think that most people don't know what they want coming out of college. That doesn't mean you can sit in a corner or, you know, yoga position on a mountaintop and just meditate until it, it comes to you. Yes. You do have to do something. And through that action, yes. we often find the next best path. Mm -hmm. What happened to me, Meher, is that I found myself in a situation where going along and just kind of the, 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 the pay was really attractive. Yeah. And so it was easy to, to, to push down what I really wanted and say, well, I'll just do this for another year and see where it goes. And then yeah. another year. And, and those another year decisions mm -hmm. became 15 years of my life. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's great. Again, for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Gregory a couple of questions and I'm going to post them on a daily basis. Kind of a journey with us the whole week. You can like, share, put comments. So tune in next time for another great question with Gregory.